everybody. Welcome to On Grade. This is season two, episode one. Uh, I'm the guy that used to be on this show a long time ago. Uh, I think uh, I think it was cold. No, it wasn't cold yet. The last time we did an episode. Um, yeah, Devin wasn't here. He's back now, guys. He's in studio, by the way. He's not in Canada anymore. What's, yeah. up, bro? What's up, bro? Well, you know, I haven't been in Canada that long, just for the record. I, I came back, and uh, we've just been really freaking busy and haven't had a chance to get together and do this. Seems like every time we talked about it, it was like, yeah, okay, whatever, and then I had something come up, or you have something come up, and life just happened, and then uh, we got lazy, and, you know, we're, we're fucking human, so it, it is what it is, but uh, we finally kicked each other in the deck hard enough, and uh, we're back here now, so uh, we're going to do it. We're going to hit this again and uh, try and try and stay consistent. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. <laughs> As we're sipping on whiskey. Yeah, we're trying to stay fucking consistent. I might get drunk while I'm doing it. <clears throat> nah, no big deal. So, uh, I guess we got a lot of catching up to do. It's been... Seven months. Uh, seven months. What was it August, the last one we did? No, we did September. I did that September. last episode with Eric Strubig. Oh, yeah, shout out to Eric Strubig, by the way. Uh, he uh, he hits me up like at least once a week. Like, dude, when are you gonna record a new episode? I'm like, we're, we're on it. Hey, and dude, you were almost the last on grade guy. Like, that's fucking award <laughs> award winning. <laughs> now nah, that kind of suck. Yeah, we Eric came on on grade, and then it just went to hell after that. So, yeah. what well, wasn't your fault, man? We, we were, lost we all our sponsorships, you. and uh, no, I'm just kidding. We didn't have any. Um, your your dad pays for this, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought so. Yeah. yeah. So it, yeah. yeah. So Put, putting is. gates and garage doors up. Yeah, he's really paying the bills yeah, with that. Daddy's money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. That's but yeah, no, all kidding aside, guys, it's uh, it's been a minute. We both had a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Brandon's done some restructuring. I've done some growing, some shrinking, some more growing. You know, it's, uh, it's business. It's what it is. Uh, ups and down and then... I had my wife move down here and the little one and stuff. So trying to balance working, you know, a hundred hours a week and not having your wife hate you for being gone all the time. And you know, it's challenges. So, but, uh, I think we've got it kind of figured out. We haven't figured it out. We just said, screw it. We're going to do it anyway. So here we are again. But, uh, yeah, I guess, what do you want to talk about? Should we, uh, should we kind of dive in? What have you been doing? Well, what's, I, uh, uh, what's I Iron got, Eagle been up to? Uh, I, well, actually, I want to get on myself for a second. I'm going to be selfish for two seconds. I got engaged, and you're going to be a groomsman at my wedding. Yeah. Um, and uh, we went down to College Station, and uh, she was wearing all her Aggie gear. And me being the diehard Texas Longhorn fan I am, I made sure I wore my Texas Longhorn shit and went right down there to Kyle Field and threw up the hook'em horns and uh, asked her under the um, tree they have down there which I can't remember the name of it. Um, I'm going to, what is it? Century. The century tree. I guess there's a tradition in the Aggie world. You cannot walk under the tree by yourself, and it's supposed to be like where your boyfriend, girlfriend, they're both going to A&M or past Aggies go to uh, ask them to marry them. So we did that, and I mar- asked her to marry me on Veterans Day, November 11th. So I did that. She said, right? Yes, right? Like, yeah. I th- she's should- sitting here. So, I mean, I, I guess so. She's got a ring on her finger. So, kind of awkward if she didn't, right? Yeah. And then I did have to ask you to, you know, if you're going to be in my wedding or not. But, well, you know, well, I'll see what my schedule looks like. Yeah. We'll try to make it there. <laughs> we only got a year. Hey, guys, by the way, we're 365 days out exactly from when we're getting married. It's March 15th of 25. So, shit, this is like a anniversary mm-hmm. edition, pre anniversary edition podcast. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Um, I wanted to tell you, Iron Eagle uh, went through a really rough winter. Um, that's the reason we didn't come have a have any episodes. Um, part of the reason Devin was also like Devin said, Devin was out of the country for a while, and then he was dealing with a lot himself. Uh, it got pretty slow. Um, had to had to restructure. Had to <clears throat> let a few guys go, and um, we've gotten a lean and mean right now, and. I'm out in the field running jobs every day, back on machines. Uh, hell, I was blue topping last night. And uh, I got to tell you, it felt good to be back on machines. feels good to be out in the truck running jobs. Uh, my mom's taking care of everything in the office now. Um, we've streamlined everything. 
And I'll tell you, I have a lot less headaches now. My stress level has gone. And I'm doing, you and me were talking about it. I billed $100,000 less last month than I did when I had 15 guys. Yeah. But you got, what, quarter of the guys? I had seven all together. Yeah. I mean, half the company, your billables have gone down by what, a third? Not even. Yeah. Yeah. 20%. So. so it's one of those things. Like, that's the thing that a lot of us, you know, you get into business and you've got this idea that you got to get big and you grow and you add guys and basically just feeding a machine and you get back to a point where it's like, it's not fun anymore Mm -hmm. because you're just doing nothing but dealing with headaches and then you're not able to be in the field because you're so busy in the office and on the phone and dealing with emails and everything else that you're not out there, you know, and that's a good way to erode culture and kind of lose touch with what's going on when you're not there, you know, and that comes back to, having the right people in the right places to be able to make sure that you can keep that up if you're not there, but it's easy to lose that and lose sight of it. And then all of a sudden you're just turning four quarters into a dollar and running rampant, trying to keep everything moving without even really enjoying what you're doing anymore. You're, you're, you're a slave to it. You're forced to do it. I mean, shit, how many conversations that we have? You're like, man, I, I'm ready to just shut this all down and go back to a skid steer and myself. And so it's not worth it. Right. But it's like I said, when we were talking about it, man, like if you ain't liking it and it's not what you want to do anymore, scale back, get rid of some guys, size it down, make it to back to where you want to be kind of thing. And I've noticed it in the last two months, man, you're like a completely different person, right? You're, you're out doing shit. You're doing what you like to do, you know, and you're enjoying it again. It's, uh, it makes it enjoyable all over again. And anybody that's not watching on YouTube, by the way, I also look a little bit sexier now i got a nice wicked raccoon tan line going on and my man boobs have shrunk a lot and so is my beer gut so you know back on that field field diet you know taking my lunch losing the double d's losing those double d's i'm down to a b now (laughs) no you're absolutely right brother and it's it's true i i literally for the last two or three months man um you know I, i you know i don't know how some people feel about it but uh i found god again that's helped a lot. Um, start going to church again. That's been helping a lot. Um, kind of went through my own little, I don't know how to explain it, like a... Come to Jesus moment. Yeah. I uh, I stared it in the mirror for a while and I realized, okay, yeah, I got a few things to work on. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't happy. What the hell am I doing? Yeah. It's, you know, you don't realize you have depression until you have it. And like, you know, everybody's like, I don't understand why he's, you know, you know, I've seen my friends go through it. You and I have talked about it. You've had it. Everybody has it in their own form. And it's like, good God, you know, you know, I'm telling these guys how to solve these problems and I'm not even doing it. I'm giving the advice to our listeners on how to correct something because I know how to do it. But my mind was so in this cloud that I couldn't break out of it and take my own advice, take your advice, you know? Well, it's easy. We all just get caught up in the day-to-day, and I think ego has got a lot to do with it, you know? Every one of us, like, man, if you own a business, you got some ego. It's just what it is, right? Why do we have shiny equipment in the trucks and their name on the door and everything? It's part of that's ego. And, I mean, there's a shit ton of people that eat in this world because of ego. You know, if we didn't have ego and we didn't build companies and entrepreneurs weren't out doing that shit, where the hell is everyone going to work? The Who's gonna, yeah, and that's the thing, right? So, you know, there there is a place in business for ego, and I think every entrepreneur in the world has a bit of that ego and that pride in them, and that's what makes them want to do that, right? And then you get into business and you fall in love with business, you know, and what it is and developing guys. And, I mean, for me, my thing that I, you know, in the beginning I did it because I wanted to prove something to myself and other people, and then you grow and you hire people, I get a shit ton of enjoyment out of watching my guys grow. You know, I got guys that started that didn't know shit about shit. Well, I started, I didn't know shit about shit when it, when it came into it, but I learned. And then you hire people that come off the street and they don't know nothing. And like, I got a couple of guys right now that started with us. that didn't know anything. You know, they weren't dirt guys. They weren't excavation guys. They weren't pipe guys that nothing didn't know anything. You know, two of those guys are running crews, you know, one of those guys ran $2 million worth of work this year on his own. And he came and started with me and didn't know anything about it. You know, when you provide that opportunity and you give him the coaching and, you know, you help him grow. And all of a sudden this guy's out here banging out jobs for like 
one of the guys out banging out jobs for Tesla and like killing it because you gave them the opportunity and you believe in that person and you help them grow. I, I, if you don't have employees and you don't, you're not in that space, it's hard to really describe it. When you can watch somebody develop and grow like that, there's a fucking sense of pride to that, man. And like seeing those guys grow, I get more enjoyment out of that than I do out of buying a new piece of equipment or <laughs> going on vacation or whatever. Like to me, that's like, that's the reason that you need to be in business, you know, building relationships with your customers and having that, having that growth basically through them, but then also your employees. Like that's, to me, that's the cool part. That's what I love about it the most, but it's often easy to let all the friggin' doom and gloom and the day-to-day -day shit kind of rain over you and you lose sight of that stuff if you're not there doing it. It's crazy that you just said that because, you know, I just started with that new batch of guys that I brought in and they're all <clears throat> handpicked. I picked these guys. This is the first crew in a long time that I've picked the guys. And uh, I got to say, yeah, we're having the growing pains right now. You know, a couple guys aren't clicking with each other. And, you know, I'm so used to being in a position where before that phone call might have came to me, but it was, hey, we'll get it handled. You know, don't worry about it. Now it's like, you're the guy. And I'm like pulling them back behind the truck. And I'm like, hey, listen, man, you know, we're, we're a tribe, dude. We're a team. At the end of the day, we're only as strong as our weakest link. And if you don't figure out a way to work together, you're never going to be able to make this happen. You're going to just sit there and fight each other, and all you're doing is hurting us and hurting yourself. And you're hurting your potential to grow and be a leader, be a good man, be a good operator, just anything. Just learning how to get past yourself. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle in this industry is they can't look past the two foot in front of them. You know, they, they only see the objective they have in front of them and <clears throat> there might be a guy that does it differently than them and they don't even want to hear what he has to say. And sometimes that guy, he might be brand new to this, but he might have a better idea. He might've, you might've been doing something that way for 20 years, but a guy comes from another company, he might have a brilliant idea. It's like, hey, give him a shot. You know, anytime a guy comes up to me and he says, hey, I think I got a better way of doing this, I give him a shot. Now, whether it works or not, yeah, it works, I will use it. If it doesn't, hey, man, we don't do that. That's just the reason why we don't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it, it's just, uh, it's one of those things. You got to just, you just got to roll with it. And especially like you were just talking about with your guys, like I had JR on the blade last night when he called me, you know, I was on the phone. By the way, I was on the phone with Devin running a motor grader and I wasn't running a joystick one. I was running a 13 stick. I also have one of my operators in the cab holding on the side doors and I'm showing them how to cut grade. And I'm talking to Devin on the phone with, with my head like this, cocked sideways. Like, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do an episode tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, running mobile board and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I was talking to David about it last night and before the storm came in. We had a wicked storms come in last night, by the way, here in Texas. But at golf ball size hail and western side of town got hit pretty hard fort worth then but we got pretty lucky over here just got a little bit of rain but besides that um i was talking to david about it last night i said man i'll tell you something it took me about a week and i was back to where i was running equipment like i was five years ago and he said dude it's like riding a bike dude once you once you've done it, it, it comes back. I didn't think I'd have it. You know, I was scared. I was like, man, these guys are going to show me up, dude. I'm, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> I'm not going to be at the level I was. I think about four passes with the blade, cutting fire lane. I was I was dead nuts. I was, no GPS, just eyeballing an ass. And you have some stakes, but you know how it is. I mean, and it felt good, man. It felt really good. I was like, all right, all right. I needed this. I can do this. We're good. Well, it's my therapy, man. You know, when you're dealing with the monotony of BS of project managers, and there's an RFI. Oh, hey, by the way, we changed the drawings. Hey, you know, um, you know, uh, the concrete guy asked if he could do this for me. <laughs> or utility guy asked, can you haul these spoils off? It's like, yeah, I'll take care of it. I don't need, it's not in my way right now. I got to get you this fire line. But they are so concerned with that. And this is what I, my whole point of the, what I was getting at when I said keeping something in front of you is handle the task you're on at that moment, then move on. Say, hey, give me five minutes, I'll get with you. 
And if they can't respect that, then that ain't the guy you need to deal with anyways. Because if he doesn't understand that, then he doesn't understand construction. He doesn't understand management. So that's my two cents, brother. <laughs> Wanted to hear what you thought about that. No, you're not wrong, man. But I don't know. I think the biggest thing to the biggest thing to keep in mind when you're running a business is not lose sight of why you're doing it. You know, and if you wake up and you don't like it anymore and you hate it and you're dreading going to work and dreading dealing with it, you gotta make a change because you're not in this business to hate your life for the next 20 years. You know, you got to remember why you're doing it and you got to make sure that it's something you enjoy doing. And I know for me, like it's easy to lose sight of it, especially when you get busy with a lot of stuff going on and you're juggling all the shit in the office. I'm not a person that enjoys sitting in front of a computer. You know, I, I do it. I can sit there for a couple hours, deal with the emails and all that stuff. But like you could do days on days on days of doing that. I'm ready to kill myself. Like it's like, not really, but uh, figuratively, I guess it's just the monotony of it, you know, getting out in the field and dealing with the guys and joking around and fucking having fun and doing that stuff. Like that's what makes it enjoyable. And you got to make it so that you can set yourself up to not get away from that. You got to be able to still do that, you know, and whatever that means, whatever you got to do to do it, if it means hiring more people for the office or, you know, if that's your, your thing, you're not an office guy and you want to be in the field, make it so that you don't have to be in the office, you know, don't, Mm -hmm. don't close your eyes and forget everything's going on there. It's important, but make it so that you can get out to the field, you know, make it so you can still get out there and run a piece of gear once in a while and, you know, do those things because that's what you enjoy doing. That's why you started the business. You should get out and do that. And when I first started, one of the first clients I had, Todd, he'll probably listen to this. I'll show him out. He, uh, he had built a construction company up and I remember one of the first conversations we had sitting on a job site is he was explaining to me, you know, yeah, years ago I had a bunch of guys and a bunch of crews and it was, I built this monster and he's like, I love doing the carpentry work and building stuff. That's I was a carpenter. I started with it. I loved it. That's what I love doing. And then all of a sudden I've got three, four crews going. All I'm doing is answering phone calls, dealing with problems, running around, job to job, bringing material. And at the end of the year, he's like, yeah, we're making more money on the top line, but he's like, I'm not really that much more profitable going and doing all this stuff. And i hate what I do. And he downsized down to nothing. And I think at the time when I met him, he had one guy that he had with him for years and the two of them were working and doing, he's like, man, I love this again. He's like, I, you know, years and years and years, I hated what I was doing. And now I'm back to loving what I do. You know, and even that, after that, he downsized to just himself, you know, and goes out and does the jobs he wants to do and loves it. And I mean, at the end of the day, I think when you're young, you're hungry, you got that pride and that ego, you know, you want to build something big, you want to make a name for yourself and all that stuff. And then you lose sight of what you really enjoyed and you focus too much on the pride and the ego and you get big and all this stuff and then you hate what you're doing, but you keep doing it because of the pride and the ego. And sometimes you got to set that pride and ego aside and really ask yourself, what do I want to do? What do I like doing? And forget about what the hell everyone else thinks. Go back to doing what you like doing. You know, and that's that's the key point. That's the thing that's important in this for everybody. Yeah, it's definitely like you said. And I just went through that, and I can attest to everybody listening. What he just said is absolutely correct. You know, he can tell you. Um, you know, we just were talking a minute ago, and I'm a completely different person than I was six months ago. And um, my mental health's better. My relationships better with my fiance. My home life's better. My friends actually call me now, check on me. You know, they're not like, dude, you sounded miserable. I was just stopped calling you because you were Debbie Downer all the time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I got, <clears throat> I had to step back and let it work itself out in order to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. And, <clears throat> you know, my guys seeing it and pulling me aside and saying, dude, this just going to kill you if you don't do something. You know, if you don't figure something out, it's going to kill you. And, you know, I, I I think I told you this maybe Wednesday or Thursday whenever you came out to the job site. But no desire to ever get big again. I really don't. I think maybe tops I'll have like 10 guys and three crews going, three jobs. But I can be on all three every day. Yeah, and that's it. And, you know, and, ain't, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that, man. And I'll do quality work. And I'll get repeat clients, and I'll make good money, and I'll work for people that pay their bills, and there ain't a lot of drama, and there ain't a lot of headaches, 
have companies that are proficient at what they do. And, you know, <clears throat> one day if somebody gives me an opportunity, I'll go do a bigger job. But honestly, right now, I have no desire. I I, I want to keep teaming up with you and doing these cool gigs that you got and doing the cool gigs I got that we're doing together on some stuff. I'm putting our business out, though, on the podcast because there's some people listening on here, and you know as well as I do that want to burn me and they can go shove it. I really don't care. But, um, you know, um, is what it is. I'm not going to put my business out like that. But at the end of the day, guys, don't ever forget that the people that are with you in the hardest times are the people that you always – when in the good times you take the best care of. And one of them's sitting right across from me right now at the other table. And uh, that man's done more for me in the last six months than most people have done for me in five years. And I thank you, brother. I mean that. Hey, man. That's what we're here for. And uh, if the tables were ever turned, I would do the same for you, and I hope you know that. It's all good, man. Yeah. That's what it's about. And uh, I didn't mean to get all teary-eyed and emotional there for a second, guys. But you need tissue? No. no. Sure. We can take a break and get tissue if you want. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> um, but one thing I did want to talk about was, um, guys, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, if you're out on, if you're overwhelmed with work, uh, don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call people you trust. You know, I picked up the phone. I got to do some scope work next week, and I've got three jobs starting next week, and I have seven guys. I picked up the phone. I called Devin. And I said, hey, I'm going to be out here, but I need some help. I got to get this turn lane done. And uh, I said, all right, let's do it. So he came out to the job, got the plans to him. Day tests called in, trucking set up, and uh, we're going to make it happen. And, uh, you know, I already talked to GC about it. Everything's good to go. It's just, you know, that's what we do. And if he needs help, he knows he can pick up the phone. And if I can make it over to him, I'm going to help him out. And that's what we do. But that's... That's taken me four years to find somebody to be able to do that with. There ain't many guys <laughs> that I would trust to do that with. But Yeah, but at the same time, it's like it doesn't matter where you're at, right? You know, whether you guys are down here or you're in the north, wherever you're at, there's tons of guys in your area. And that's the beauty of social media. And you know, that's the beauty of Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and podcasting and stuff. Like, it's a small community. You know, how many guys do you talk to on social media or you shoot the shit what you never met in your life? Like, there's tons for me. You can network with guys in the same business as you that live 10 minutes down the road from you and they're your competitors you know and in all reality those guys are your competitors but it's a small community and we all deal with the same shit mm -hmm. don't be scared to jump on freaking instagram slide into someone's dms and be like hey bro what's going on you know and and have that conversation and not in a not in a way to like try to get something out of them in a genuine freaking way man like go out and make friends and why not make friends with guys in your area like shit I don't know how many times over the years I've pushed work to other guys, you know, <laughs> right down the road from me and stuff when I need it to, you know, I had too much going on or whatever. Don't be scared to give a job to somebody or to help somebody out because those favors come back tenfold, you yeah. know, and, you know, at the end of the day, everyone's easily get distracted and they're scared that, man, this guy's going to take my lunch, <laughs> you know, he's, he's bigger than me or he's going to, he's going to take this job in me or whatever, but you you can't be scared to go out there and help everybody out, you know, and push work other ways and talk to guys and make those relationships, and those connections, because that on its own is what makes this business easy, right? Shit. There's tons of guys. You can, I could jump on the phone right now. I'm like, Hey dude, like, can you come help you out in this job or do whatever? And like, they're happy to do that and they'll do it for you on the backside. But that comes with making those connections and mm -hmm. talking to people and, you know, use social media as a tool to network, you know, and not just network for customers, network other people in the in the business yep. even if you don't need something from them or they don't need something from you the hell's the wrong of making friends right it never what, hurts i swap dirt with guys all the time that's how i do it you know everybody's got you know they got the apps and stuff now but i did it old school for years i just got to know all the superintendents from other companies and pick up the phone call them up and be like got any jobs around here yeah you need some dirt yeah it's good yeah it's clean i'll oh, bring it on over make the company you know extra 10 15 percent on a job you know, and uh, that happens, man. It's a, it can turn into dollar signs, too. You got to look at it that way, too. I mean, that that job that they, the guy that 
you know, gave you that job and to help him out, you know, you never know. You might get a kickback for that or he might, you know, it goes both ways. So, you know, it's one of those things that it never hurts to ask for help. And that's where I think a lot of guys, they have this misconception that you shouldn't ask for help. Absolutely not. You should always ask for help. If you're overwhelmed, ask for help. Raise your hand and be like, hey, I need help. <laughs> I, I'm sitting here telling you I've done it. Uh, Devin's done it. We've all done it. Uh, anybody that says they haven't is full of shit. So, um, well, if they didn't, they're stupid. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. If you're, if you're drowning. <laughs> don't be scared to ask for help. <laughs> Made me think of that meme where the guy's in like the tub, but his head sticking above. He's like, I'm drowning. <laughs> He's like full size dude. <laughs> oh fuck. Um, I did want to talk about uh, something that is very important that guys should be talking about. And that is uh, home life. We got to find this balance, guys. You know, you hear guys talk about it all the time. I just was listening to a podcast the other day. Uh, it wasn't about construction, but it's a podcast to listen to. And um, they were talking about mental health. And uh, I'm a vet. Devin's a vet. In the veteran community, it's very high, uh, especially guys that have been downrange, done some pipe hitting, you know. That's a very high area. Believe it or not, what's higher than co combat veterans is construction workers. A lot of people don't know that. So if you're feeling down, you're feeling like you need some help, I don't care if you message me, message Devin, message the Iron Eagle Instagram page, message On Grade. I don't care. My personal one, just message. I'll be more than happy to call you at 3 o'clock in the morning. We can talk. If you want to come to the house, I'll buy you a beer, whatever you want to do. You know, we're all here for each other. That's what we're doing. We're a family. And not enough people do that anymore. They're just like, oh, well, this is a, this group you can call, and they'll they'll talk you, as, you know, off a cliff. It's like, dude, who wants to talk to a guy that done, done anything you've done? Never been this. Like you just said a minute ago, you know, we've all been through this. You know, yeah, we're all at different stages. There's guys that are struggling right now. There's guys that are killing it right now. But everybody's been in one or the other. So don't be afraid to pick that phone up and call somebody or message that person or Hey, dude, you know, you in Dallas? Yeah. Can I meet you for a beer? Yeah. Come on, man. Let's go have lunch. We'll sit down. Let's talk. You know, it's, you got to have that, you know, and the three people I have to call is my wife, oh, soon to be wife, Devin, and my mom, because my mom is my partner, and, you know, I can talk to her about a lot of stuff, and it's nice, but there's a lot of guys out there that don't want to do that. They don't want to call anybody. They're just like, oh, I'll just keep it inside. I don't want to stress anybody else out. It's don't like, be scared to be vulnerable. Yeah. I mean, you got to you gotta talk. Devin, how many times a week do we call each other? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, five to six times a week. I mean, you called me about 7 o'clock this morning or 7.30. I was getting to the job. It was rained out. And you're like, you'll never guess what happened today. And it's like, yeah, I know, brother. And it is what it is, you know? end of the day the sun's still gonna come up tomorrow you still got blood flowing through your veins the bill's still getting paid at the house you still got a wife and kid at home your truck's running you know you got shoes on your feet you got food on the food in the fridge i mean you gotta take you know we, we take so many little things for granted you got diesel in the machines you're on a job there's guys begging for a job right now you know it's like one of those things we got to be grateful for what we got no, 100%. And a lot of people, I think, just take it for granted. And I think that's what screws a lot of guys. They get that complacency mindset. And then I had it. Uh, and when you come out the other side, you're just like, whoa. I don't even know how to explain it. You, like you were telling me, you said you're going to come out of this and go, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes life serves you up a nice slice of humble pie. And Fucking shit, dude. You just got to grab a fork and chow down. That's all it is. Yeah, you know, that one movie, Sylvester Stallone was in it. I don't even remember, but there's a scene in it, and he's like, nothing hits harder than life. And it's if you get back, you got to get back up because that's what winners do. And, man, ain't that the freaking truth, dude. That's all it is. If you're, if you're an entrepreneur, like Devin said, you're an A-type personality, you got to – you got to be a tough son of a bitch because life's going to hit you and it's going to hit you a few times and it's going to hit you fucking hard. But you got to get back up. 
That's all you can do. Let the haters hate, man. One foot in front of the other, man. Let left the right, haters hate. Right. Let everybody talk shit. Fuck them. Let them hate. They ain't feeding you. They ain't fucking you. They ain't paying you. Fuck them. Who cares? Keep rolling. That's how you got to be. They're always yelling in the cheap seats, man. Yep. They're up there at the the fucking skybox yelling, oh, you're so badass. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyways, get off my soapbox. Um, sorry about that. I do want to talk about a few things. Um, the changing climate right now in construction. Um, guys, this is the time to start getting your sh- pencils out and start thinking about the future. Um, we had a taste of it over the winter. Um, I, I know, especially here in Texas. It went from <laughs> from 21 till what, third quarter last year, balls to the absolute wall, and then it went <laughs> And I know you were busy because you had those good set up. You had those good long-term contracts you had. But I knew a ton of guys, man, laying guys off. Everyone I talked to, Mm -hmm. there was a month and a half where I'd get two, three phone calls a day. You guys hiring? You guys hiring? You guys hiring anyone? You know anyone looking for work? You hiring? You know, and that's uh, here in Texas, I think, especially the guys have been spoiled for a while because it's been busy as hell, you know. I'm used to that slow season in the winter where I'm from up north because it was just a normal thing. Winter happens, it slows down. You have winter seasons everywhere, and especially in construction, it's what it is when you're doing a lot of big commercial projects, it's budgets, right? So corporations wind up for the year, use up their budget, new year starts up, takes a couple months to figure out where they're going to spend money, what's going on here, all this stuff, and you get that low and that slowdown. And uh, if you're not prepared for that, and you're not thinking of that ahead of time, you're going to find yourself in a place where, oh, shit, <laughs> we got no jobs coming in. Nothing's starting. What's going on? Like, that, that's a tough spot. But uh, I think what we're going to see here in North America especially is uh, there's going to be a slowdown here, you know, and not everywhere. There's going to be places that are still going to be busy, but there's going to be a lot of places that are going to slow down. And uh, you guys got to start thinking about the relationships that you're building with your customers now because at the end of the day, when you have, when you're the guy that's jumping from place to place to place and job to job to job to job, and you're looking to make a quick buck, make a quick buck, make a quick buck, you know, crank that change order up, screw the GC here, there, and everywhere you can, you're not rubbing people the right way. You know, you're not scratching everyone else's back all the time. You end up getting in a position where, you know, you jump from GC to GC to GC and job to job to job and customer to customer to customer. And you're focusing on making that quick buck today, here, there. You're not thinking long term. You know, you're not thinking about do I build this relationship with this good client? Am I gonna, you know, help them out on this job? Am I gonna, you know, help them get through this stuff? Like shit, man, I did it this winter. You know, client we have, really good client. They uh gave us a huge change order on this job. Bunch of stuff got messed up. The owner came down. Okay, we got to do it this way. They call me up. Hey, can you get us a change order for this? It was a big change order. Get them the change order. Yeah, let's go. Fire it up. Get it going. How quick can you make it happen? We go in. We bang it out. We get it done. Turns out someone in that company dropped the ball. Didn't get the change order signed. The design change that they made came from, you know, the second tier GC And they didn't get it approved by the owner. So after they'd spent all this money and did all this stuff, it didn't work. Now, I had told them it wasn't going to work in the first place, but it went up to the engineer and came back down twice. Nope, we're going to do this. It's going to work. Okay, whatever. So we did it. Well, when it came down to it that it didn't work, the owner's like, we're not paying for that. We didn't approve a change order. So now this client that I'm working for calls me up and is like, hey, I know we approved this. Any chance we can work on the numbers on this? It's like, fuck, well, that's, that's a lot, you know? And I'm like, shit. And I could have very easily said, nope, nope, you signed my change order. Here's the price. You owe me the money, you know? And I look at that and I'm like, well, that's an opportunity that you have right there to build some good faith, you know, and build that relationship, build that bridge. You know, I called them back. Yeah, what do you need to do on it? You know, obviously I got to pay some subs. We got to, you know, do this, you know, whatever. He's like, can you do it? You know, cost plus 10. Yeah, no problem, man. Rework it, send it back a new invoice. 
they're still out money and they're making me whole. I'm not making a huge margin on it. And we spend a lot of time doing it. You know, that's when you look at it from a business perspective, the time that I spent doing that, I could have made an extra 30 points on that working somewhere else, you know? So I just gave up 30 points on a month and a half worth of work for that customer, but I didn't go backwards and they're still making me whole on it. And I built that relationship with them. So when things come up and there's opportunities for other jobs and you throw in a bid on the job and you're a little bit high, you think they're going to pick up the phone and be like, Hey man, you're like five, 10 points high on this. Can you shave this and we'll give you the job? Yeah. hundred percent. That's building relationships, you know, and it doesn't always mean that you're going to win, 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 win on everything. You know, if you're the one that's always winning and every, every time you sit at the table and have a negotiation and the other guy's never winning, then it's not a fair thing. And they're not going to keep feeding you work. And especially when times get slow, those are the relationships that you want to be able to lean on. Right. So don't be afraid to take the time now to make those relationships. You got clients, you know, that you've worked for, for years. When was the last time you picked up the phone, called one of those project managers just to, sh- just to shoot the shit, you know, not even working for them, haven't worked for them for a while, not call them to hit them up. Hey, you got any work? Hey, what's going on, man? How's the family? How's things? What's new? You know, whatever, make those calls, you know, don't be, don't think that stuff's not important because at the end of the day, keeping your name and your stuff fresh in those people, people's minds that helps you long-term. But at the same time, you don't do it from a selfish perspective. I'm not calling these guys with a thought in mind that, Oh, I'm just going to call them every two months, you know, and eventually they're going to ask me to work. It's genuine. You know, I build friendships with my relate with my clients, the people that we work with, it's show up to site, shoot the shit, bullshit, joke around, talk about family life, you know, whatever I'm doing that genuinely to build a friendship, you know, with these people, not just to get work. I mean, if that person never hires me again, I don't care. You know, it's, I still, Hey, made a friend. Cool. But the, the basis of business and sales is really overcomplicated and, uh, oversold. You know, you look on social media or you go to any of these seminars and stuff and they're talking about sales training and sales pitches and click funnels and marketing this and all that. There's a place for marketing and there's a place for sales funnels and there's a place for all this stuff. But at the end of the day, when you boil down business, look at what it really is. People buy from people they know and that's what people want to do. If I have the option of going to Walmart to buy something or go into the corner store to go buy the same thing from Joe, that I go in there and buy it and have a conversation with them, laugh, tells me a joke and I leave. I'm going to go there and buy it. Mm -hmm. And I might have to drive five minutes down the road and pay 10% more to do it. But I would rather do that to help Joe out than to go to Walmart and buy it at Walmart. And everybody is like that. You know, anyone that's worth the fuck is like that. (laughs) The people that you want to work for are like that. You know, they're preconditioned to want to sell and buy from people that they know. And that's what you got to remember with your clients. You know, whether it's a homeowner or whether it's a GC on a job or a project manager or the owner of another company, You want to build those relationships and those friendships because those things are what benefit you long term. What is the lifetime value of that customer? If you go in and you do one job for that customer and you make a hundred grand, great. But if you go into that job, you make a hundred grand and you make a friendship with that customer and he uses again the next year and then five years later uses you again, 10 years later uses you again. And at the end of the time when you're ready to hang up your hat, you made a million dollars off that one person. That's the lifetime value of that customer. Don't forget that. Just because you don't work for these people every day, you know, there's a lot of value in maintaining that relationship and being friends with them. You know, and that's not, people know when you're calling them to get something. Everyone's got a bullshit meter. Everyone knows the sleazy car salesman when you walk in the dealership and, hey, man, what's going on? And they call you six times the same week to try to sell you something. You hate it. Drives you nuts. Don't want to talk to them. Fucking piss off. Stop calling me. No one wants that. Don't be the sleazy car salesman. You know, make the friendships with those people and don't expect anything out of it. Go into it genuinely wanting to make that friendship and build that relationship and it'll develop into something. You know, whether it's today, tomorrow, five years from now, that stuff comes full circle. (laughs) I was driving here tonight 
and I got a message on our Facebook page from some dude. Hey, man, uh, you probably don't remember me, but last winter in November at TSC, you helped me load a 100-pound propane tank in my truck because my arm was busted. Anyways, I got a house that I just bought in Blue Ridge on an acreage, and I need to get my property graded. Any chance you can come out and give me a quote on that? Did I honestly friggin' think that the guy that I helped loaded a propane tank into his truck in November last year was ever going to call me for a job? No. Did I load the propane tank in his truck expecting that I'd get something out of him? No. I just did it because the guy needed help. And then I stood there and had a conversation with him for 20 minutes. And a year later, a year and a half later, this guy messages me out of the blue to come and do a job at his house. That's the thing that you need to remember and keep in mind. And that can be anyone you talk to. The friggin' guy flipping burgers at Whataburger might have an uncle who's a developer that ends up hiring this kid three years later. And because you went in there every day and shot the shit with him and joked around, all of a sudden when he needs to cut a dirt guy, man, that guy used to come in all the time. You're it. You got a job. You know, and that's that's the stuff that people forget about, right? So don't be a piece of shit, you know, and be a good person and make friendships and build relationships. And that is going to be the most critical thing that you guys can all do in the coming years, because believe it or not, things are going to slow down at some point. Might not be this year, might not be next year, but we're going to slow down at some point. And if you don't have any relationships and you don't have a network and you're just the guy jumping from job to job to job, you're going to be out on the street corner asking someone else for work because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> I had a client I worked for for first three years we were in business. We were, we did, God, I can't even think, maybe 10 jobs. And um, had a great relationship with him. We did one job, and the one project manager and I just, and I'm not afraid to admit it, we just butted heads. Just his personality and mine didn't click. He came from another company and he had a company that he used to use at his old company that he preferred and he tried to find a I didn't exactly not give him ammunition, but <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> he made a few off the cuff comments and so when times came like you're talking about with the change order, me being the guy I was. Yeah, it stuck into him pretty good. And uh we stopped doing their work for a while. And uh, the owner found out, called me. It was probably a year, year or two ago. He says, I don't want to do any of my job. I said, man, I'm bidding everything. I said, don't even get a call back anymore. And he says, man, what happened? Come to find out that they had moved him up to head of pre-construction from project management. He never took us off the bid list, but pretty much as soon as our bid came in, went in the trash can. So nobody saw it. Minus him. And, uh, or the junior estimator would hand it up. Estimator look at it. They'd go to turn it in to the owner because it would always go in the trash can. Well, he got let go. We did a few more jobs for him. And uh, it was weird. It was just after that happened, it was just kind of, they, they had a really bad turnover. And that second round of work for him, it just wasn't the same as it was the first time and it was odd working for him the second time and um that was the one time that i was like you know i love repeat business but right now this is just you know, you know what i mean like it just there was something odd about it so i just i just stopped pursuing it but <clears throat> kind of going off of what you're talking about prime example i'm on a job right now and um they wanted to keep all the dirt on site and they had a lot next door and the way Pete qualified it was we're going to put all the dirt on the adjacent lot and spread it out and uh, they told us that the city had approved it and all that and this is a very good client of ours um, so we go out there and we move all the dirt cut all the fire lanes out cut the retaining pond cut the pad moisture condition all that truck all the dirt and we start to spread it out, and the city shows up. <laughs> and the inspector goes, is this uh, this permanent or is this temporary? He's like, well, what does the answer need to be? 
<laughs> well, if it's permanent, I need to see a grading plan. I guess there was no grading plan. And uh, I said, okay, well, uh, what do you need to be to be temporary? He says, I need it piled up. Mind you, I already spread it out. Probably about 8,000 yards of dirt sitting over there in this lot. And going back to what you were saying about a good client. And could have probably made a phone call and easily gotten some money. Just piled it up. Didn't call, didn't ask for anything. Just did it. GC called, superintendent called me and says, Hey, Brandon, uh, did you did you hear about the city thing? Yeah, already handled. Stockpiled. What? Yeah, we already took care of it. Stockpiled. He got real quiet. I says, what, what's up? And he says, That's, that should have been a change order. I said, yeah, I'm not worried about it. About an hour and a half later, project manager calls me. He says, send me a change order to haul it all off. They're going to make a grading plan, but I want to have backup in case they don't to haul it off. I said, okay. He says, uh, and also put 20 points on it since you did all that shit for free for me. That's a prime example of having a good relationship. That's all it is. Yeah. It doesn't always work out that way. You don't always get money out of it. No, but you don't no I'm do not it. saying it's You don't do it with the intent of money, right? You're doing it because it's a relationship and it's a two-way street. And, you know, you got to help where you can. And it's stuff like that where it's like, you're already there. What it costs you to pile it up, you know. Eight hours in diesel and payroll, not yeah. a big deal. It's not the end of the world, you know. And then when you look at what have I made off this client over the last X number of years, you know, lots. So it's like at the end of the day, don't be scared to be helpful. Don't be scared to go the extra mile. Don't be scared to, you know, I don't want to say lose money. You got to eat. You can't go bankrupt doing it. But at the same time, don't be afraid to, to help when you can. And those little things with the right people go a long way. And you'll find those people because you're going to do it for the one guy and then he's going to ask you, expect it all the time, whatever. He's not the right person. Don't do that. Cut that off. You know, that's not the person you want to do business with. Look for other clients. But the ones that are good clients, they appreciate that shit and they see it and they know it, you know, and the comment will be made or someone will say something and you know it. They remember it. The next time a bid comes around or whatever and you're a little bit high, give it to them anyways. You know, and that's... That's the thing to keep in mind, right? So especially with the future climate of what's going to come sooner or later, don't be scared to, to build those relationships. If you're in a mid-sized company, you know, I don't know, down here a mid-sized company could be 10 to 50 guys, whatever. <clears throat> you should probably pursue having three to five good clients. After that, you got to work for somebody else because those five are slow. Yeah, be very careful on who you pick. Try to work for people you've already worked for in the past. Um, I'm at the point I'm going to work for about five people for the rest of my time. Maybe six. Maybe some of your guys that you want me to do with you. but Because you swear by them. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm trying to get you on people I know are going to take care of you. But that's also what we just talked about earlier, connections and networking. You know, I'm not going to put you on a job and put my name on it and say, hey, Dev, these are good dudes. And then you guys get sideways the first job, and I'll go, well, they were good to me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, I, and I know it's the same for you. You're not going to put me on a job that they're going to set me. You're not going to set me up for failure. I'm not going to do that to you. No, that's it. But that's that's networking and talking to people and making yep. connections. And, you know, and you can do that anywhere you are. It doesn't matter where you're at. There's somebody else in your neighborhood that's doing the same thing and, Shit, man, don't hurt to reach out and say what's up. Nice truck, nice gear, you know, whatever. It's uh, it's easy to do with social media. You don't got to drive down to the job site anymore and roll up on the guy and start a conversation in the middle of the day when he's trying to get something done and get cursed out because you're fucking screwing his <laughs> shit up, right? You know, it's easy enough now to be on social media and, hey, guy's working down the street from me, you see his stuff all the time, you like a couple of his posts, shoot him a message, hey, man, looks good, saw the job site, whatever, you know. Don't be scared to do that, and uh, don't be shy to do it. You might you might get ghosted or told off or whatever, but hey, now you know you know where you stand, anyways, with that person, and then forget about it, move on, and go to the next one, right? But building those relationships all the way through is is valuable, you know, whether it's suppliers or other guys in the business or clients. You know, it's what it is. And yeah, and something I'm I'm gonna say too is uh, try to be try to be always polite and be respectful. Um, and there's going to come times, guys, you got to eat crow. 
and um, it sucks, but you do it. And there's been a few times that I've been in situations where, on paper, yes, I was right. But was it worth blowing the opportunity to do $5 million more million worth of work for this guy over five grand? Was it worth it? No. Prime example. Another job I'm on. <laughs> like I told you about the guy at the testing lab. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So... Rule of thumb normally when you're doing a select fill cap here in Texas. I don't know how everybody does it, but most of the geotechnical labs here, the PI that they require, depending on the lab, but most of them it's ballpark. It's a 5 to 15 plasticity index. I don't know if anybody listening, if you don't know what that is, what it's saying is the clay content inside of a soil. It's a mixture of sand and clay, and what you're looking for is, is the plasticity index. And what it's saying is if it's got too many fatty clays in it, it's going to swell and shrink. If it doesn't have enough, it's going to be sand like you'd put on embedment. So it's going to just stay compacted and it's not going to expand at all. So what you're looking for is kind of that happy medium where it's going to have the perfect amount of expansion, but you're not shrinking at the same time while you put a building slab on it. That's the whole point of that. <clears throat> so anyways, I know I probably put half of y'all to sleep just telling y'all that, but the point is it can really screw you if you get four or five loads of select sent out as test samples and all of them fail because the PI proctor that the lab that we were working for at the time, the civil engineer that writes that report has been writing the same report since 1995. Not kidding. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anybody knows, but they built a lot of crap out here and the pits that they were using those PIs out of their parks now or their lakes or their neighborhoods that they filled in they filled it in and made built neighborhoods on you can't get that select anymore inside the metroplex you have to go hours outside of the job needless to say we found the select they wanted and we had to charge a church i'm not making this up i'm not even afraid to admit it over twenty thousand dollars we didn't mark it up that was just the material $20,000 just to cover the cost because of this guy refusing to acknowledge it. Um, and it's a church, <laughs> you know. Uh, I built a lot of churches. Normally, you try like heck on those kind of jobs, any kind of public, anything I've ever done where it's like something with the schools or something with the church, I don't try to mark them up. I really don't. You know, yeah, normal markup, but not, not gouging them on a change order. And... It really, it really bothered me. I took that one pretty hard. I, uh, the guy, so anyways, they approved the change order and, uh, we put the select down and normally you can put a foot lift down or an 18 inch lift and compact it down to a foot cause it's select fill. It's not moisture conditioning and come out and probe it and test it and you're good to go. Well, they want four, six inch lifts. So on top of it, you're using more material. So. We called for the lab, and they weren't working on a Thursday. They just weren't working, so they didn't show up. So David calls me. He says, what do you want me to do? I says, well, when they show up, we'll just peel it back. They can take a shot there, take a shot at the foot, and take a shot at the foot and a half. We installed it per the specs, you know, rolled it, watered it, did everything we were supposed to do. Seven days goes by. Spray water all over it every day. Somebody goes out there and sprays water on it twice a day. It's been cool out. It's not been hot. Technician comes out, <clears throat> flo throws his hands up, starts yelling at us, why did you install this select without me being here? I said, we called you four times. Oh, according to our tracking system, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, here's my phone showing I called your lab four times. Um, I've had problems with this lab in the past, but um, I'm not going to put their name out, but they know who they are. And um, they made me rip it all out, reinstall it, just so they could watch the densities passed when he shot them but they still made me rip it out and he said to me i'm doing this just to prove a point <clears throat> i said okay um i flipped out i thrown my heart at the old me came out for about five seconds my foreman might have grabbed me 
and I went and sat in my truck the rest of the day, but um, my blood pressure went through the roof. But um, I realized something. I said, that's the old you. That gets you nowhere. And uh, so I went over and I apologized to the guy. <laughs> He'd asked me two years ago to go apologize to the guy. I said, yeah, I'll apologize to him with some brass knuckles. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not going to apologize to you. I did. And um, he ended up cutting us break and only making us do two shots and put it all back in, and that was the end of it. But had to bury the pride. Get more flies with honey than you do with oh, shit, yeah, man. I know, bro. <laughs> you know, I tell guys that all the time, but, man, when it's you sometimes, it's it's hard. It is, especially when, you know, you did the right thing in the beginning. You know, if you did, if I had just screwed it out over and just thrown it all in there and just rolled it on top, you know, and be like, yeah, it's too full. We rolled it on top of it. It's good. Yeah, okay. I did it right. And that's what bothered me the most. And, um, you know, I told the, the GC, they said, you know, a lot of guys would have just said, screw them. You know, we're not doing it. I said, well, I don't want to lose your business. I said, I feel bad enough. I had to increase the price of 20 grand for the job. They said, man, that wasn't your fault. And what was great was me being polite about all this, they're never going to do another job for that GC, that lab, because of what they did. So they showed their true colors. And me keeping my cool... Ish. Cool ish. <laughs> Got them off the job, which is what I wanted from the beginning, anyways. But I did it tactfully. And if you can do something tactfully, you can get what you want done. Yeah, that's it. You got to keep in mind the big picture isn't to uh, be right all the time. Yeah. Just to get to the uh, the finish line and keep moving, right? It's miraculous how it always works out if you just le- kind of let it flow. They always. You know, they always say, uh, you know, somebody screws you over, believe it the first time. And it's true. I mean, just, just let them kind of do it to themselves, and it'll all work out. It's generally how it goes. Oh, yeah. They, uh, they're always good at taking themselves out. Yeah. And, um, you know, when the technician goes up to me and he goes, we're a moisture condition, and he says, you know, we have jobs. We have problems with everybody on every job. All these dirt guys. That's funny. He says, why? He says, I work with all these other guys, and they don't have a problem with anything we do. I said, <laughs> tell you all something funny. We were doing the moisture conditioning there. We are doing the moisture conditioning on another job. Three points. I know you know this. Three points of moisture difference between the two. You know how they wanted it? The guy in the one job wanted it? He wanted it like mud. Sinking the dozer tracks eight inches into the into the ground. The other guy was letting us throw natural back in the hole and saying, just spray a little bit on it. It's good to go. Three points is not much in moisture. So you want mud and you want natural. Who's right? I guarantee you the guy that's throwing natural was probably right. Because if it's three points above optimum, optimum is pretty much native soil in the, in the spring and fall. You don't have to do much to it. You can literally just throw it in. The way if it just rain and it just rained the week before, you don't gotta do nothing to that. This guy's making us make mud patties over here, so it's taking us three times as long. It's tearing up machines. It's a ton of labor intensive work. I did the same size pad in two days. I did that pad took me a week. Exactly. Yeah, it's 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 what it is. But a lot of those things, I remember is. Uh, those uh, not all those guys are rock stars and geniuses either, but yeah. everyone wants to feel important sometimes, and uh, usually sh- usually comes out in there. But that comes back to uh, making friends. Don't be scared to give the technician a hat, and you know, be nice to him and have a good conversation. And then generally, you get a whole lot more than when you're not, you know. And then you end up with a pain in the ass like that. Yeah, I was nice to the guy from the beginning. And then he started becoming a pain, bigger. So once he got to the Royal Rumble asshole mode, I became Royal Rumble asshole. Steve, Stone Cold Steve Austin on his ass. I wanted to go, <laughs> wanted to go three sixteen on that ass. I, uh, you know, it's hard as a as a business owner 
to sit there and watch somebody that's um, anybody listen, please don't take offense the way I say this. A fucking pee on. <laughs> and, and no, like, dude, you're fucking nobody, dude. Your fucking wife hates you. You're a fucking douchebag, and you know you're a fucking douchebag. You could have just easily fucking worked with me. I would have gave you just as much overtime. I'd have been like, hey, bro, chill in the truck. We're not, we're done, but fucking chill. We're not going to say nothing because they're there as long as we need them there. I just let, That's what I did with the other guy. We were done at like 2 o'clock. I had him chilling with us till like 6 o'clock at night. I was like, we're fucking grading out and shit. I said, just chill, aren't it? He's like, man, I don't want to go to another job. I was like, fucking chill out here. Shoot some fire lane for us. So we got some fire lane done while he was there. This other guy was like, oh, I got to make it here till 6. I'm like, yeah, you can still pass the shit. <laughs> like, I know he was failing it on purpose, dude. Like, I seriously know he was. Uh, take sorry, all, sorry, sorry. Takes all kind of make a world, man. That's all it is. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, you got to. It's hard sometimes to bite your tongue. And it took a lot. This is me. It took me a lot to bite my tongue the other day with that guy, but I did it. And it, I think it's part of the reason is, is being an owner at the time where I was at before, I had guys, I had middle guys. I didn't have to deal with these guys. I was dealing with someone, no offense to say it like this, and you know what I'm about to say, at my intelligence level. So it wasn't like... Yeah, you were dealing with the guy serving called, burgers just, at Whataburger. I just called, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't dealing with the guy changing the grease out. I was dealing with the guy making the burger, at least. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But, you know, it, 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 it was, you know, if if I had a problem, if my guy's called and they're having a problem with tech, all I did is call his boss. And if his boss gave me the ring around, I just called his boss. But when you're out on the job site and you're dealing with the guy direct, you're like, hey, dude, stop being a fucking asshole. You know, we can all work together. And he's like, well, my boss didn't call me out. I said, I didn't call your boss. I'm talking to you, man to man. You know, like, and it, he couldn't click that in his head. Like, are you that arrogant? Like, really? Like, and this is what I'm getting at with it is don't be arrogant <laughs> when it comes to dealing with people. Like, I, I, I don't care if it's the... If it's one of your guys working for you, it's the GC, it's the lab, it's the city, it's the truck drivers, it's whatever it is. You know, I'm out sweeping the street yesterday, and a uh, truck driver, he's coming out, and we weren't trucking, but the utility guys were bringing in their material. They were bringing in their cushion sand and rock and stuff. And one of them pulled out, and he hit a mud spot, I guess, right before he got on the rock come out of the job and it got all over the street and we're working in a city they don't play about it at all like if it gets a crumb on the street they're there in about 30 seconds dude i am jumping in my truck kicking the lights on throw it in park i'm out the truck i'm back in the sweeper i'm already hauling ass down the street with the with the uh blade down you know we have one of the sweepers with the blade on it and i'm kicking up the mud patties flip it back around come back out push it all up to the front of the job, grab my shovel, start shoveling all the mud out and behind the silt fence. And um, inspector comes up, just standing there. Young guy, probably my age, just watching me. Hey, man, you need to get this stuff out of the way. And me being the smart ass that everyone knows I am, I said, hey, buddy, there's a shovel on the bed of my truck. And he just gave me that look like, I don't touch shovels. Okay, whatever, dude. So, anyways, I get the street cleaned up. Well, another truck's coming out while the inspector's standing there. Guy gets out of the truck. I say, hey, bud, you got some mud clods on your tire. Here's my shovel. Can you clean it off for me? I got to finish sweeping this. Oh, you can, go, you can go clean my tires off for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> God's testing me today. I said that too under my breath. I said, God, you tested me today, boy. I swear. I'm about to get 25 today. It's going to happen. And uh, I looked at him. I says, okay. So, uh, anyways, I uh, didn't clean his tires. And uh, this is where I'm getting out with it. He pulled out in the street. And as he's pulling out, his inspection sticker was out. Here comes a state trooper. 
lights him up, pulls him right over, gets him out of the truck, does the three point inspection, puts the suit on, <laughs> roll <laughs> under the truck, starts ripping everything apart. He got him shut down. I was like, man, I'm glad I kept my mouth shut. Cause that guy would argue with me about five more minutes. That trooper wouldn't have got him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, that's karma. <laughs> that's it, man. <laughs> Uh, world works in mysterious ways, but yeah, that was a good time. Yeah, no, he's not wrong though. It's uh, especially when you run a business and you get a lot of stress, it's pretty easy to blow up on people and unload on shit. And uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, keep your cool as long as possible because it's going to get you a whole hell of a lot further than being that asshole loudmouth <laughs> that we all know we can be. <laughs> I'm fucking guilty of it. Oh, yeah, 10 oh, times over, yeah, but, bad. but yeah. Other than that, I think that's a good note to end her this week, boys. I agree. Um, if you haven't, guys, yet, uh, please like and subscribe on uh, the YouTube um, YouTube channel. It's On Grade Podcast. Just type that in the search block. Um, check out our Instagram. It's On Grade TX underscore TX. We got pictures on there, thumbnails, stuff like that. Check out Devin's uh, company, Ruben Group. It's spelled r-u-e-b-e-n group uh check out iron eagles page it's iron eagle tx i think yeah um just if you want to talk to us just message us either on the on grade page or either one of our company pages one of us will respond to you um give us our five stars on spotify leave a like and review on a- apple if you would just uh you know tell brandon he needs you know angry at management and you know, there you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're pretty much blacklisted from everything now. It's been seven months. We're like yeah. mothballed in the back of the closet. Yeah, so uh, you they, guys are gonna have to put some work in to get us back up there again. They're, but they're uh, throwing us. They're gonna throw us crumbs. But yeah, you know. we're putting uh, it out there again. <laughs> we'll get it back, brother. Yeah. Um, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Colt McCormick and uh, my man over there at the Certified Wrench. He was gonna come on tonight, be our be our guest tonight, but he you know, was busy. But he's gonna try and get on the next episode with us. So I thought maybe we thanks, have... thanks for bailing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm gonna have him try trying to have him back on next week or two weeks when we record the next one. But uh, we're gonna get back on every two weeks, guys. So uh, we apologize ahead of time for the delay in the episode. And uh, um, I don't really have anything else. You got anything else? No, that's it, guys. Like. Share, subscribe, shout us out. Let us know if you want us to talk about anything. And uh, we'll get back at it. So that's it for now, guys. Stay humble, and uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Have a good night. Bye.